Hi there guys. We're so happy that you came to visit us today uh, to learn a little bit about making Chilorianos. We have what we believe to be one of the better restaurant quality Chilorianos recipes and methods of taking the, the outer skin off of the chilies. Uh, you may or may not agree, uh, Chilorianos are, or Chilorianos are just like tacos. There's so many different varieties and ways to make them. Ours, we do make a little bit differently. Uh, the tr traditional way is just to fold in a chili into kind of an egg uh, batter and egg dish, make it kind of an egg dish, uh, sometimes with cheese just sprinkled over the top. We do a little differently with, uh, with cheese being stuffed inside the chili and then more of a corn and flour batter uh, over the top and deep fried. This is the way that we see in many restaurants as well, and that's what we're gonna go over today. So sit back and get your notes out and be ready to take notes on, on the recipe for chilorianos. Okay, when doing chilorianos, the first step is going to be to select your chilies. These happen to be hatch chilies. Uh, we prefer to use Anaheim's when they're available. They tend to be a little straighter uh, and a little bit more mild, depending on the heat that you want or you'll accept or you like in your chilies. You may want to go with hatch. Uh, the hatch variety will be a little hotter. Uh, you may see them listed as either mild or hot. Uh, in either case, whether you're using Anaheim's or the hatch chilies, look for ones that are straighter uh, as much as you can. And you don't want to have super, super long ones as they may not fit in your fryer. So anything that's from anywhere from four or five inches uh, we, we, we try to look for about a six to eight inch uh, uh, chili that is as straight as possible because that will help us when we put our cheese spears and they'll, it'll also uh, allow us to put a couple in the fryer at a time. Okay, on to the next step, which would be to wash each of these and then we'll get on to the steps after that. Okay, the next step, once your chilies are washed, you're going to take and put a small hole into each one of them, any simple knife, just putting a small hole into each one, because as you go ahead and fry the chilies to get the skin to release, what's going to end up happening is they're going to puff up and the moisture inside is going to want to kind of blow up. And that little cut on each one is going to help make sure that they don't blow up on you and instead you're going to control the the amount uh, that, that they that they that they tear in a, in a controlled way. What we have found that works best is a very large fryer uh, the uh, not quite a commercial one these are just the larger home ones uh, but what we do is that's going to allow us for can I get one pepper from you? That's, that's gonna be long enough that we can put in two of these side by side and have enough room for them to fry. And you'll see in the next steps that we go from there just to a spot where they're going to be able to cool. While you're waiting for the grease to heat up so you can start cooking the skins off of the chilorianos or the chilies themselves, you're going to wanna to get an ice bath ready this will simply consist of a large tray, uh, or, or you can use a smaller one, but we have a large one, so we're gonna use that. Putting down a layer of ice at the bottom, then a, a, some sort of a dish towel of, of some sort, and then a second one over it. So what you're going to do is have that ice in there. You're going to bring the chilies in, lay them on that bed of ice, just protected from it by the, the, the dish towel, then this is gonna be another cold, cold towel that's gonna to go right over it. And you'll see when we start doing this that that is what helps uh, that skin release. Uh, but again, this can be prepped to save yourself some time, get this ready while the grease is getting hot before you begin frying. And I'm told by Chef Karen that the best to use really are flour sack, sack towels. Flour sack towels work best. This is your basic setup for getting the skins off of your chilies. Obviously you have your chilies. You're going to have your longer frying 
it's like a big fry daddy but this was a different one you can use anything from a cuisine art to the gourmet ones that are listed here anyway this is the setup and then you have a tray for uh, where you're going to pull them out and that is really a lousy video okay first is to get that skin off of the chili and that hard skin can be taken off a number of ways the most popular is to just do a stove or over an open flame in which case you're going to end up charring or blackening the outer skin and it'll peel off quite e easily we've seen some of the more professional restaurants do it this way and what ends up happening you just place them in the longer the long fryer and what ends up happening is that they are going to go ahead and oftentimes even self-turn they're going to bubble up as you, as you see and once the skin starts to separate watch out for the, the the flying grease once the skin starts to separate you're going to see it turn gray once it's done all the way you're going to have a tray with paper toweling on it and that paper toweling is going to absorb the grease and you're going to end up with chilies that look like this and then we'll take those inside for what we do next once you once you have the chilies brought in from the hot grease you're going to place them on that ice bath with those flour sack towels that ice is obviously going to chill them quickly and that's going to help the skin release a little bit better and then you're just going to end up covering that up with the other layer of the cold cold flour sack towel towel and that should end up uh, help, helping that again helping that skin release and so give that a couple of minutes and we'll show you how to start peeling your chilies okay so once your chilies have been under that uh, under that cold uh, towel or in, and on that ice bath for a few minutes it's time for one of the least fun jobs uh, and that is to peel the 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 skin off of the chilies go ahead and have another tray ready uh, that, that will have some paper towels on it uh, that, that because you're going to be rinsing these as well so you'll need another spot to dry and what the way these these start is very simply uh, that skin is going to end up releasing off of there and with that oil it makes it pretty nice and you're just going to go ahead and kind of press and pull that that skin comes right off I uh, have a garbage like I do here right in front of you so it's all ready to go uh, then once that skin is completely off uh, you're still not really done depending on the kind of heat you want especially if you've got the hotter hatch chilies you really don't want to leave the seeds in there the seeds and all the little connective tissue uh, that is where the heat is on the chili and so now we take that little hole that we made originally to kind of help make the make it so it wouldn't blow up on us we're going to make a little bit larger slit and if you can see there are the seeds that are in there I'll make this one a little larger so we can see a little better but there's those seeds and those seeds give a lot of flavor but that's also where the heat is and so now carefully you're going to want to take your knife I just use one of the cheaper little serrated knives you don't need a super super sharp one uh, to cut yourself but uh, a decent knife a little paring knife will work uh, but just go ahead and cut don't try make sure you're not cutting through to the other side but you're going to cut off the material there right up at the top that holds those seeds on then you're going to go ahead and try to pull that little seed pod off of where it was and kind of pull out a little bit but up as well otherwise you're going to tear all the way down and by taking out those seeds you're taking out most of the heat okay we're going to throw that away the next step is going to be under under some nice nice cool water we're going to go ahead and rinse that did you see the seeds come out okay we're going to try to go ahead and flush as much as we can of getting those seeds out and once we can kind of look inside and there's hardly any seeds left in there if we if there's a couple in there not a problem uh, you shouldn't be eating these if you don't like a little heat but once those are fairly clean then that that is ready to go now we're going to go ahead and take that over and set it on the spot where we're going to be letting that dry 
and then we'll go on to the next step which is going to be stuffing them with cheese after these are all dried. One step that you can do either beforehand or while you're waiting for your partner to help with the, the chilies to be peeled, you can go ahead and do your cheese preparation. Prepping the cheese as first selecting the kind of cheese, you can use a block of either mild cheddar, medium cheddar, or Colby Jack. You want to find a brand that will melt fairly easily. Uh, we have found that some of the most popular ones like Tillamook, sorry, they actually don't melt very well even though the flavor is delicious. Uh, so some of the, of the other brands you may have to experiment with. One other kind that we have found was an American cheese. Uh, if you remember, the, uh, if, you, if you see the label, you will recognize it's Land of Lakes. It's a very melt very soft, meltable cheese, and it does very, very well. Some people think it might, might melt too easily, and if you don't uh, care for the American cheese flavor, that may not be uh, an, an option you want to consider either. But anyway, you're going to go ahead and take your cheese, and you're going to make about quarter inch slices on that, on that block, and then once those are made, you're going to take that block cheese. I find it very easy to cut that into quarters or, or thirds. And then, uh, then once you're done with that, what you've done is now you have created this, the little cheese spears that are gonna go inside uh, each one of your chilarinos, okay? And so we'll go on uh, to fast forward and save you guys time. We're going to go ahead and just just show you that little bit, and we'll we'll go over and start stuffing our ch our uh, our chilarianos, our chilies. One small time saving hack that I have found has been to go ahead and do up your cheese in advance in the spears, and then go ahead and just lay out some plastic put those little spears on it and just start rolling them up. What that does effectively, it keeps them from going all back together, uh, but it also makes it to where you can do these up uh, hours before or the day before and have those all done. And when you are ready to go ahead and stuff your chilies, just unroll it and start stuffing them. Keeps everything nice and clean and you can have that prepped well in advance. Hope that helps. Okay, so now comes up one of the easier ways, uh, or one of the easier steps of the process of making your chili rellenos, and that is going to be stuffing with the cheese. Each one of these chilies now has been carefully, uh, the, the, the seeds have been pretty well taken out, as you, as you can see. Now, if you end up making too large of a slice, don't get all worried. Uh, you can always take a toothpick and go through after you've after you've stuffed the chili, and you're just take it, taking the cheese and putting it down in a ways. And if you think that that's too much of a gap, really the the batter is going to close around it pretty well. But if there's any issue, just take a, a toothpick and run through it when you go to to place it in your fryer. The only thing is, very important, remember to take the toothpick out when you're done. But basically, that's all you're doing is taking a, one of the chilies uh, and what I do is I, I try to match the spears of cheese with the size of the chilies. If it's a little bit larger one I try to put in a little bit larger spear. If it's a little smaller uh, chili we'll use a, a little bit little bit smaller spear but either way if you've cut your spears fairly even it's not going to matter. Uh, some people like it with a little more cheese some people with a, a little less but we find that uh, as long as every every chili uh, you want to have try to have a little bit of cheese all the way through when it melts because each bite of the chili you, you don't want just green pepper uh, or 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 that you want to end up having a little bit of that cheese in in as well so that's the basics of of putting your your or stuffing your chili rellenos with the cheese and then at that point you're set up to where you can do one of two things you can either go ahead and take that green chili and 
individually freeze it uh, because at this point you can go ahead and wrap it in plastic and do, do that with all of them and individually freeze them and, and at a later date go ahead and bring them out uh, and, and then start the battering process and all. Or you can go ahead to the next step in processing them and that would be to just go ahead and uh, and batter them and fry them up and, and have a really wonderful meal of chilarianos. Okay, now we have all of our chilarianos or the chilies stuffed with, with uh, cheese and now they are ready for the frying. So, Chef Karen is going to go ahead and take a chili, rolling it lightly in flour. That's just to let the batter stick then into the batter, making sure that there's a nice coating all the way around, and then directly into the fryer. Okay, one more time, taking a chili, lightly rolling in the, in the flour. That does help make, it, make the batter stick. Using a fork kind of helps put that, that batter on, and then there you go. Okay, we'll take a we'll take another another view here as soon as they're they're uh, golden brown. But once they're golden brown, we'll be flipping them. And once they are flipped and golden brown on uh, all the way around, of course you know the next step, and that is eating it. In frying them, that's kind of the color you're looking for. Just a nice, uh, more than tan, kind of a, a light brown uh, on, on both sides. And the process continues. Okay, so then once you have made a plate of these wonderful little items, then all that's left is to try one out. There we go. See the <laughs> that one went into somebody's mouth. See the cheese gonna that 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 that's just nicely uh, right right there ready ready to come, and you can just imagine that going into your mouth. But I don't have to use my imagination for mine. My mouth is watering. Good luck with everybody making their chilarianos.